Alright, so for with a plate, if your bat's not flat, don't bother. It's okay for, if they're not flat, it's okay for smaller things, but for a large object and when you have to come to turning, if the bat's not flat and when you cut through with a wire, you've got to have an undulating base and that'll be really tough. Um, Linda, you don't need to uh, video this because Ray's videoing it and it will go up on the on YouTube and you can see it there if you want to. So we've got a fairly soft clay, about two and a half kilos. Is that for me? Thank you. And I've um, shaped the bottom so it's a, a point. So when you throw it on, all the air moves out. Um, when you're working with plates and you've got to push lots of clay out towards the edge, then soft clay is much easier to work with. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of coning with the plates because you're putting so much pressure going outwards. I still like to cone things, I find it easier. Um, so pushing away as I'm pushing it back down. And then a lot of pressure is coming from my right hand to actually get this on centre. Most of the force is going that way. And some of it's coming from my left. Everything directed towards the middle really. So left hand pushing it down, right hand sort of controlling what's happening on the side. So I'm pushing clay out with my left and controlling the side with my fingers on the right, sort of claw grip. And there's a couple of different ways to make plates. One is a method where you're actually digging into the middle, dragging clay out, bringing a little wall up, laying it over. And to do that, you start with a thicker hump of clay here. So, similar to what we've got. The second method is to bring it out thinner, poke your finger in from the side, and lift the clay up to make the wall. So, um, we, you know, we'll use the sort of method that you'd be used to with opening a pot out, from the middle, dragging clay out. All right, so I've got it pretty much on center. And now we need to drag some clay out. One of the negatives of dragging clay out, let me just check the fitness first. Right yeah, we've got two and a half centimetres. One of the negatives of dragging clay out is often you tear strips off. I like to dig a hole with a sponge under my hand, and that sponge is wrapped around that piece of clay. So my fingers in here, my left hand are doing most of the work. Join my left with my right, and I'm recompressing that clay as I'm dragging it out. So this finger is doing most of the work. It's push, pointing in the direction the wheel is spinning, backing up with my sponge on top. I'm just trying to come out horizontally, or you know, maybe up slightly. Get that clay out to the edge, and then you need to compress it. Alright, so you may have ended up with some ins and outs and ups and downs by the time you've dragged it out there. So pinch on either side of it and then push down from above. So I'm going to try and bring clay up while I stop it from going anywhere with my right hand. And you can compress the walls out. Again, look at my bracelet. Can't get any closer than that. You know, I haven't got a lot of locking happening with my legs, but my hand is right here. I'm not doing this where my brace is on the chair. It's as close as I can get. And if you're going to control the clay, you need to brace as close as you can get. Yeah. All right, so we've got the wall out there. Got a negative space. Now we need to sort of refine this in here. Compress it a bit. The clay doesn't really like being flat. It's more likely, more prone to cracking in drying and firing. So if you can compress it, Trying to line on the plate plate that's a bit better. You have a less lower likelihood of cracking. Alright, so we've gone in and out. Got a curve in there, I really like a slight curve in the bottom of the plates. Now we're doing the wall thickness. So I've got my left hand on the pot, pinching, choose a section, bring it up. Compressing. 
pressing all the time as I go. So I'm still moving up into this finger across the top with the sponge in between, but I'm allowing my left hand to dominate. More power coming up with the left hand, less pressure with the, with the right. Okay, so uh, more thickness I think is about right. And I don't want to be throwing lines in anything, so I'm going to use some ribs or kidneys to iron everything out. So my favourite, straight edge. Running my hand up against the inside of the pot, supporting it on the outside with that. Then getting a nice smooth curve on the base. So I've got my kidney holding with two hands, pushing down. I'm not holding it at a right angle to the clay, I'm laying it over, so I'm push clay. So we want that kind of angle. Working on the right hand side of the pot, moving out, moving back towards the middle. Larger plates, you can use this sort of thing. But with what we're working with, I think this is adequate size. And it's really important that you've got really nice, clean, smooth curves, no burrs. Now, wooden ones are good for some things, but they're, often their curve isn't really that great. You need to refine them a bit. So I find these come pretty well um, smoothed down, so a good one to use. Alright, so we've got the inside profile. And now we need to lay the rim over. When you lay the rim over, it's going to stretch, so you need to allow for that and um, leave a bit of wall thickness in it now. So just checking the thickness, tapering it towards the edge. We can have this thinner than that down there, that'll make the plate that's a bit stronger. And it's really critical at this point too that you don't have any ups and downs or ins and outs. Because by the time you lay it over, you've got more weight out one side and the thing's going to collapse. So it um, needs to be really spot on and from a centering perspective. What I'm trying to say is if there are any wobbles, you can press them out now. And I like working on the opposite side of the pot this. So I can see what I'm doing. And I'm supporting underneath, sandwiching the clay in between, and laying the clay over. So sit back and have a look and see whether it's getting close to what you're, you know, what you're visualising, whether you're happy with it. And as they dry, they tend to come up. This side tends to dry faster than the side that's against the batter. Your, your rim lifts up. So can't really go down totally horizontal, we'll sit just above eventually, but sort of factor in that it does come up a bit. And that, that, that changes depending on the clay that you're using too. Some clays do that more than others. Find the rim of it, a little bit of plastic. 
Does that curve that you did with the ring to compensate for the fact that it tunnels up and it dries? More just because I like a positive curve. I can have it straight, I have a really flat line, I can have a negative dip in it, um, but I just you know, want to go for a positive this time. And I think I could come down a little bit lower to compensate for exactly what you're talking about, which is you know, it lifts up as it's drying a bit. Okay. Then you want to undercut the base as well as you can. Let's take that little burr off there. So we want the very last point on the plate to be angled under. So that way. And you can use a stainless steel tool for this or um, a bit of wood or you know these this such an all-round tool this one. Um, you know, I like the sharp edge on the bottom of here. The tidier you get that, the easier your life is going to be when you come to turn it. So again, same thing with the wire as we did with the last pot. Put it really tight and press it down with your thumbs against the back. Spin the wheel really slowly and drag through. Pulling it really tight. Now it's quite common to be able to see a bit of movement happening in the middle of the pot. So you're pushing that down and pulling it through. If you hold it a sort of slack grip, it'll suck up into the middle of the base. And they tend to do that naturally anyway. So what you're actually, when you wire cut, you'll have a, you know, a positive curve cut out of the bottom of the plate. So when you flip it over, there's going to be a slight negative there. All right, one more little bit of fiddling on the rim. And then it's done. Okay.